Well, hello everyone and welcome to the plot tour at the end of June in the middle of a heat wave which uh, is a little bit unusual really because up until that point it was been a terrible June very cold things have been really struggling to get on but uh, the <laughs> interloper poppies seem to be doing well we just let them flower and lo and behold we've got three different types so we've got to save the a seed head from each and uh, give them a go next year. So everything is doing quite well. We've got flocks flowering there that just got uh, transplanted in this year. We've got marigolds and the Cotiana cosmos that are coming through the wilderness of uh, the end of the Nigella. The Nautia is fully out here. Got borage going mad there, mixing in, the, in with the flowers of the potatoes. So the the new strawberries have done their bit. The blueberries finally seem to be happy with this arrangement. I've got some fruit on that one there. It must be pretty close to needing harvesting. Now the courgettes. This is an exact perfect example of how bad a year uh, it has been up to this point. Um, these were direct sown, very reluctant to come out of the ground. And there was always a big risk of being slugged. And we were quite late with putting them in, so we got away with that part. And look at the black currants. Here we go. We have got lots of harvesting to do there. We're going to be rearranging this a little bit. We've realised that having uh, gooseberries to the north in slight shade of the black currants is a good idea. The one over there <laughs> in the, in this on the south side hasn't done so well as the one on the north. Carrot bath. Carrots are finally coming through. Very patchy germination. With all that's meant is we've got more sort of succe successional planting and the usual array of weeds. Nets and summer and weeds, it's, uh, you know, here we go, there's a weed coming through there in amongst the strawberries. Worked out quite well having strawberries in the bath for the first year. They've been cropping nicely and not being slugged. So the meadow, hmm, <laughs> we're getting some of the stuff we sown uh, mixed in with a lot of the stuff th that was probably here already. This seems to be the year of Scarlet Pimpernel as a weed on our plot. It, there's always one weed each year that takes the upper hand. So that rose has done its thing. So here we are finally with bed number five for us. Absolutely covered in flowering chicory. These are the bean wigwams. It's just as well they don't ha have a risk of suffering with something like blight or anything towards the end of the season because they're very late in. And doing quite uh, quite well now, but um, we'll see how they go. So the onions, we did a bit of an experiment with uh, leaving one side some weeds and on the side not weeds. And um, it wasn't a huge difference apart from we thought that the side on the left was um, with the weeds was better but then we've always found that anything growing close to the grass tends to suffer a little bit obviously the grass demanding a bit of, of the moisture so here are the poor sad pepper still looking a little bit yellow which is a pity really we're hoping they're going to uh, realise that um, the weather has now changed. These tomatoes seem to have got the message. They, they seem to be uh, a good colour. They're always trying to look for sort of not much internodal um, growth so they can just stay nice and compact and put the energy into the fruit, not their size. French beans, 
poor germination with the sicken sowing here on the south end. We have got a tray of backup ones, probably have to use most of those. Garlic, well, <laughs> covered in rust. Um, it's still got enough green to, to do a bit of growing, but um, I don't think we're going to get much. They did, having put them in sort of late January to avoid um, the first flush of the uh, white rot. Um, well, it rather depends on how good the year is, really, and it's not being good. Peach tree, well, <laughs> I have thought about taking it out and pushing the um, compost bay back about a foot, and then we've got this nice south facing growing area maybe for tomatoes or peppers. Foxgloves are finished. And where one finishes, this orange lily starts. A nice little pink pen stem in there, the, trying to hold its own at the back. Now the best place on the plot for tomatoes is this south facing front of the shed. This metal corrugated iron here sort of uh, radiates the warmth at night time. And that's why I'm thinking maybe uh, about having an area at the front of the compost bays there having a similar effect. So this is all planted up, mostly with Cosmos. There's a Nicotiana in there. That's one of the monster ones we grew last year, which did rather well. Red Love covered in apples. Quite a few of them have got this kind of scabby coating. I bet that's weather related. Got another chicory going mad at the front there. Oh, I was going to show you the sea holly. It's a monster. It's one of the pups from the main one we've got round the back, and I think because it's its only flower, um, it's made all the effort of making it really, really big. So the peppers in the quad grow, they're doing, doing much, much better. And look at that nice pepper there. Wow. I'd take that. The lavender's come out. This is the original Waldo thornless uh, blackberry. And a bit of bindweed going through it, but not surprising really where, given where it is. And see, this is the original sea holly, and you see how small the flower heads are when there's so many of them. Oh, Amistad's come out. We've got a new little water feature for the birds. And in fact, when we were sitting on the bench recently, a little sparrow turned up to have a drink. Hoster, flowering nicely, looking a little bit slugged. Dahlias are coming on well at the back there. I've cut back the, uh, the comfrey, which is why it's looking a little bit ugly. Uh, I've got uh, pink dye, a lot of dead heads to do there. Dear Lily. It's geraniums. Absolutely loving it. There is actually an Alstroemeria in there somewhere, but the poor thing <laughs> never seems to be able to fight its way up before everything else. There is a, a, a few pluot fruit. But the pluot itself looks terrible. It really is not happy. In fact, it's spent most of it six years of life on this plot looking a bit miserable. So the clematis is out. And Gertrude Jekyll, she's doing her thing. So I've just tidied up this section here, given the super column plums a prune and uh, chopped back the mostly nigella underneath. I've done the sort of Helen Atow method of mulching fruit trees with their own prunings. Apparently they're meant to like that. So I have tied in the raspberries, trust me I have, there's a little cord there. They have been looking a bit wild this year. It's funny that the 
probably the most pathetic of the plum trees is the this one here is the only one that's actually given us loads and loads of fruit. Probably means it's in its death throes. So, sweet corn, <laughs> aren't you envious? So there's a second sowing um, of eight at the front, the original ones at the back here, a couple of little runts down there. They will produce eventually, sometime in mid-September. So, uh, for those of you who watched Jesse on Plot 37, um, she's been having problems with her parsnips. We at least this year had them germinate, um, whereas in previous years we've really, really struggled. So I don't know whether the seed that we're getting these days is a bit variable. Got some parsnips in there with them. So here we are with some lettuce, some French beans, some tomatoes. Got some clover to uh, have a sort of perennial root in the ground. We've got uh, marigolds and leeks just popped in there at the front. And here we have, looks like we've got uh, scarlet pimpernel in amongst cabbages and lettuce. And these lettuce collars have been, they're pretty good. We've, uh, I'm quite happy. They're, they make harvesting a little bit awkward, but I think we'll probably roll with them in future years. So our mystery garlic is now about to flower. And we've got some more garlic we put in the spare ones, more leeks in there, or spare ones. So the fruit forest I'm needing to prune back having started with the super columns, the espalier apples here, the pear, this, uh, the Victoria plum here is just a monster. So this poor apple tree, I think we will take that out. I've got some plums coming here. So the nigella is still going although it's mostly seed heads and it's little blue flowers but in amongst there we have detected there are some dahlias <laughs> I'm not sure how many of the dahlias are actually going to come up and the wall though, this is a spur from the original one up on the bank it's going crazy, I'm having to tie in its new growth onto the trees around it <laughs> well, since the dams in there and the pear haven't actually given us anything, that serves them right. They can just be supporters. Well, I need to deadhead the uh, chives here. Well, actually, I'm probably a bit late now. I think to set seed. So we got a. Borage right next to a um, foxglove, <laughs> and I have for this. <laughs> can't, oh, I think it was a, it was naturally JB and uh, Jess that were doing the garden tour. My goodness, they're sweet peas. Hmm. I don't think they'll be envious of mine. <laughs> they're about a foot tall. Um, sweet peas just do not like this uh, this site for some reason. So our sick and early potatoes. They haven't really run their term, uh, and a lot of them are looking very yellow. So that's the jazzy variety. So we'll start harvesting them soon. We've got Java and Sarpomira at the front here. That's doing a lot better. I think that's going to run its full term and hopefully give us a decent quantity. So I think I have waffled enough. Hope everybody's keeping well. I will catch you in the next month's video. Bye for now.